I'm Izzy. I'm Kate. We're the sister composer duo Dulun. We're here as part of the Body Space season. We're so excited to be here on site creating yeah. a brand new music piece. Called Pirel and the Reverie. We wrote the album when we were living at home in our parents' basement. And at that time, we both found ourselves in Pierrot's shoes in our own ways. The melodramatic, sad, clown, fool in love. The album follows a narrative, Pierrot falling in love, being in the high highs and down into rock bottom, and then finding himself. We've been collaborating with Alexander Honer, who's a hand-drawn animator, and she's created this whole world. We've picked out a couple songs from the album to mark this journey in this piece. Hi, my name is Jared Mazzacci, and I'm the director and multimedia designer for the concept video. We really wanted to make a love note to like a venue that hasn't been used in a while, and hearing the lyrics and hearing the soundscape that Deloon was making, it was evidently clear that movement would help the viewer understand how to feel the music in a different way. Hi, I'm Colette Krogel. And I'm Matt Reeves. We're the choreographers. One of the first ways we were introduced to this project was just through the music. And the moment that we were hearing it, that movement actually was already pouring out of us from just the sound itself. Just imagining this Pierrot at the box office, this character, this lonely person in a world that is left behind or transformed, we don't know what. But starting with that image and just sort of working backwards like a dream. My name is Robert Rupama and I'm playing the role of Piero. Just to have mine, what can I do to break this energy that I have? I'm Taylor Steele, and I am the assistant director and script consultant on this project. Been a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be stressful, but the second I walked in, I was full of relief. <laughs> it was so relieving to be back in a space that just feels right to be here. The moment I walked in, I mean, I haven't been in a venue in a year, and, uh, Oh God, to just walk in and see people, and we knew that we were gonna make something together. Um, it was really cathartic. Before we got into the venue, everyone was like, <laughs> I think we're just gonna all burst into tears and start crying. What actually happened when we all walked in was everyone was just happy and excited and ready to go. There were no yeah. tears. My cardio is not what it used to be pre-COVID, right? So camera operating, especially in like a one take, Dancing uh, is, is purely exhausting, but I'm doing my best. I'm Stephanie Guida. I'm the cinematographer and editor for this project. Being in this space and being able to create in person again is amazing. It means a lot to see people in real time, in real space, all working to achieve the same goal. Yeah, it's, it's like coming back to something so familiar, but we, we all appreciate it in a very different way now. Something that's been really exciting about working during COVID is we approach the venue entirely differently. So instead of just approaching it as a performance hall, we've looked at the whole building and said, okay, what pieces can we use? Every nook and cranny. The lobby, the box office, the freight elevator, yeah. the AV closet. This piece is site specific. Sawdust has such a unique architecture. How do the walls speak to us and how does the space speak to us? The space itself is gorgeous. It has like a maze-like quality. I think we've all fallen in love with this building. National Sawdust has uh, an open floor plan. Doors lead into more doors and rooms lead into more rooms, which allowed us to incorporate 360 degree movements. Those one take motions and those long tracking shots and every time we turned into a room there was a different lighting scheme. I mean even the walls of the building there, there are very few right angles in here. The hallway is like a crazy octagonal shape. Once we got into the main space here at National Sawdust there would be this ability to use projection to bring in these monitor people, other characters that were influencing our protagonist. And so there was kind of this big quest of how do we do that? We started with a lot of dancers in our company and contacted other dancers that we knew, actually all over the world, we had people that came in even from Japan. <laughs> There's 16 performers and they filmed it in their own spaces. Jared is live mixing. He can have hot keys and with the music be responding to both um, the dancers on the screens, the dancer in the space and the music and it's all happening in real time. There's something right on the nose about that experience for all of us right now of how we absorb and take in uh, people that we know or don't know through screens. The projection scene, right, is like how I feel on Zoom every day. A screen within a screen within a screen within a screen. He's trying to absorb 
all the monitors and all the information from all the monitors that's me in my house on Zoom for the past year. I've done a lot of remote shoots over Zoom, uh, hundreds. I realized I've only made things at my desk for the last 10 months. Even just seeing like speakers on a rack and like cables coiled is, uh, is something I haven't seen in a year. The act of being able to be given a space to say just make you don't see that anywhere, especially right now. Sawdust has been integral to the shape and design of this piece in every aspect, starting with Sawdust's team. I mean, you, Danielle, helped design the concept. The staff here is awesome. It's been so supportive from Sawdust's end. The feelings I've had in these, in these last three days, I'm gonna remember this rest of my life. It's a true gift to have that as an artist right now. Sawdust, to me, is about exploring what you thought were the limitations of your art and, and the form itself, about pushing your own boundaries and getting to explore how storytelling can exist in different ways. Having the mixed media and video design work, having dance come together, lighting, film, and just letting it incubate. Not every space is like that. Like National Sawdust, to me, is about artistic freedom again, artistic breathing again. It's been the way to expand the way I'm thinking. I would think about like space when I'm dancing, space either like above me or below me, incubate my thoughts, test some new ideas. It's funny to think about where we were when we were writing this record because we were actually pretty isolated at that time. Especially in this project, which is like so timely to what we're all going through right now. Discovering the main hall of the building it's like this, whoa, there's this new world that I can tap into and I can like be big, be larger than life, be, be open. I think it's big that uh, Sawdust is making something possible when uh, it's, it's very easy to see the impossibilities. We obviously aren't in the space the same way we might be with live audiences right now, but there is a possibility present and a lot of hard work comes together to make it present right now, taking those first steps to just keep making. You know, that moment that you haven't seen someone you deeply love in a very long time and you've gotten used to that, it's uh, incredibly, um, it's just incredibly emotional. We lost it without even being prepared for it. Theater spaces, open spaces, rehearsal spaces feel like a second home, so uh, it really was just like, oh, finally I got to come home. Thank you so much, and you can find the piece on National Sawdust's website. Is this love, your story, or is it?